Hey guys, back at it again with another magic video, but this time we're not drafting. We're playing some commander or an MTGA MTGA, it's called Historic Brawl. And if you guys have not subscribed already and you guys are enjoying my content, please hit the subscribe button. And if you guys enjoy this video, hit the like button as well, as it really helps. But we are gonna play with Brovac the Grand Delinquent as our commander, a three mana one four. That um, if an opponent would mill one or more cards, they mill twice that many instead. So, normally we try to get our opponent to zero life. But this deck is trying to mill out all the cards in the opponent's library. Because if they have none in there and they try to draw a card, they lose the game. And what mill means uh, is, uh, well it says in the top right corner. To mill a card, a player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. So we're trying, we're constantly trying to just... Get all the cards that are in their library into their graveyard to win the game. But Brovac is just a 3 mana 1 for that can die to a lot of removals. So we are running a bunch of ways to save it from removal, such as Slip Out the Back and March of the Swirling Mist that lets us phase out our creature until our turn. That way it can't be targeted. And we're also running cheap counter spells such as the Swan Song. And an offer you can't refuse, which hits different kinds of non-creature spells, which are normally the spells that are going to try to deal with Brovac. But the other ways we have to mill are a lot of artifacts, enchantments that constantly mill them. So, for example, we have, let's see, the Teferi's Tutelage. Uh, whenever we draw a card, the opponent mills two cards. And similar, similarly, the Psychic Corrosion, whenever we draw a card, each opponent mills two. And then we have cards like... Do, 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 do. Where'd it go? The uh, Mesmeric Orb. Whenever a permanent becomes untapped, that player mills a card. And Drown Secrets. Whenever I cast a blue spell, the target opponent mills a card. So you guys get the gist. We want to get a bunch of enchantments that just passively mill them. And then we have, like, if we. The blue has a big issue with uh, not having removal. So we have. Cards like Rivers Rebuke, which bounces all non-line permanents, and Kicking Cyclone Rift also does the same. And they're both one-sided, so only the opponent uh, bounces their things while we get to keep all our goodies on the board. However, I think the best way for this deck to win is... Let's see, let's search up the cards. We have four cards that mill half the library. So with Brovac on the board, milling half their library instantly wins the game we got the Mindbreaker and swallower that mill half the library when they attack and then we have two sorceries uh cut your losses and madden cacophony which also mill their library in half the only card i question is they all mill half rounded up so if i brovac that guarantees mill them but cut your losses rounds down so if the opponent has an uneven amount of cards in the library and i have brovac on the board when i cast this I think they're only going to have, they're still going to have one card remaining in their library. It won't mill them out immediately. But yeah, aside from that, we got some other powerful cards like the Hallbreaker to uh, help stabilize us if our mill plan isn't going too well. But hopefully get some good games. Don't know how great this commander is. It seems more fun than good. But sometimes even I like to try to have fun in Magic. So let's uh, see you guys game one. All right, game one. Um, I think this hand's capable as we have a Ruin Crab and we're against Myth Weaver. Myth Weaver's power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. Whenever one or more non token lands enter the battlefield under your control, for each of them, conjure a duplicate of it onto the battlefield. This ability triggers once each turn. But we have a turn, one Ruin Clab, Clab, <laughs> Crab, and whenever we play a land, it will mill them three. I'm a little worried, they're probably going to get a lot of ramp, and um, just get too many creatures on the board for us to deal with. Let's opt first here. Search your library for an instant distortion card, put it into our hand. So we could try to find the combo of milling half the deck with the Brovac, but we're going to need like 
9 mana for that, I think, so... I don't think we want that yet. Let's just play out a land, mill them 3, and uh, yeah, pass the turn back to them. We do have a protection spell for the Brovac. So maybe I should have searched for the other piece. Because we could play Brovac on turn 4 with the protection spell. Or I guess on turn 5 and then on turn 6 try to go for the win. Start of the work. Let's make your opponent mill 13. But we don't really have a good play right now. I think I am going to play out the Brovac. And hope they don't have a way to remove it. But yeah, they got a ton of mana. And now green spells they control can't be countered as well. And for six mana, each elf you control has a power and puffness, puffness of five power, of five and five, and become two like and become dinosaurs. Yeah, we're under a lot of pressure, and I can't even think of any else, really. I think they get to play both lands here, because they can play in a, yeah, play two additional lands every turn. They can flip the Vorinclex next turn. So what is our plan here? Probably land pass and use the march of the swirling mist to um, phase out a bunch of creatures. The opponent still has 74. Can't counter their creatures. Yeah, I think we're about to get completely run over this game. However, we do. Like, we do have a couple of outs. And I'm wondering if I just take six this turn and save the. Um, the March of the Mist. Yeah, let's do that. Let's hope we can draw one of the cards that mill half their library and just deck them <laughs> with the Brovac. Can I scry? Nope, I don't have enough mana. So, yep. Our turn. Mill them another three. And I guess six because we have the bro back, which mills them for twice as much. And we're going to pass one more time here. And we kind of got a top deck something. So, they get to look at the top seven cards of their library. Can I counter that? Yes, I can. Because it is not a creature, right? Right? Wait. Am I reading this wrong? I feel like I'm reading this wrong. Green spells you control can't be countered. Alright. They get to look at the top seven cards and um, put some permanents on the battlefield, right? Okay, into their hand. Alright, alright, alright. We're okay still. <laughs> We're okay, right? We're totally fine. Just got a top deck. How hard can it be to top deck? This is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 damage. So I don't have to use the mist yet either. And I'm just gonna chomp 7, 7. Go to 13. And a scry looking for a way to deck them out. That is also. Not a way to deck them out. But oh, still one more turn. So I want to be able to cycle the Typhoon and phase out as many creatures as possible. And I can exile. This costs two less for each card exiled from my hand. So I can exile one, two, three cards.
Dang it. So I can exile six, okay. Bum bum bum. Exile. 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 And... I think I gotta exile this. Oh, okay, perfect. I have enough to exile everything. So let's just do that. So I can scry instead of cycling, which I guess is better because it gets us two cards deeper. So we only have one out, I think, technically in the deck. I guess they're even, so we have two outs. We have two outs in the deck that we can draw to meld them out of their entire 64 cards. Let's go to damage. And we have to hit it this turn, otherwise we are most definitely going to lose the turn after. I guess if we find the bounce spell, that would help as well. Neither of these work. And I think that works! Sweet! Yep, there's their entire library gone. Boom! <laughs> Alright. That was a great game one. I don't know if every game will go like that. Hopefully there wasn't too much background noise. Alright. We are on the play with the Oracle of the Alpha. And one of the two combo pieces we need. Two card combo to win the game. That was insane last game. Um, let me know if you guys like the camera better in the left side here instead of the bottom right. I noticed that it does cut off the card when I zoom in like that. So maybe I'll move it back to the bottom right. But I've noticed other um, Magic players had their camera here. But yeah, opponent has Tasha and Holy Archmage. Um, plus one until your next turn whenever a creature attacks. Put a minus one, minus one on that creature. And then for their minus two, they can put a creature card of their choice from their graveyard onto the battlefield. And then for their minus six, an opponent reveals the top cards of their library until they hit three creatures. And then she puts them onto the battlefield under their control. So I'm assuming they're going to have a proliferate deck to try to ultimate Tasha really, really quickly. But let's just play... You know what, there's no need to pay the Seagate yet, so let's just play an island and pass the turn here. I really do need a protection spell against a um, black-blue deck. And we're going to hold the Maddening the Company till I can mill them out. But yeah, against a green deck, I just knew they didn't have too many ways to kill Brovac. Whereas a black deck is going to have lots of ways to interact and kill with Brovac. But yeah, let's cycle our Typhoon here. And hope they don't have a counterspell for the Oracle of Alpha. For the, those of you who don't, don't know what this does, it's an alchemy card, and when it enters the battlefield, it shuffles the, it shuffles, it shuffles the power 9 into my library, which includes Time Walk, Ancestral Recall, all the Moxes, and I think Time of Twister. Oh, and the Black Lotus, of course. So, yeah, let's do that. And then whenever it attacks, it scries one as well. Okay, nice. It did resolve, and we do have the power! You can actually copy it, too. Like, you can play the Scarf Devil and copy the Oracle of the Alpha to shuffle another... Another set of Power 9 into our deck. That's super funny. But yeah, I think I do like doing that. Oh, but now I can keep open the gate. So maybe I play the bro back because I have protection within the gate. And um, try to deck them out. I think this is a little too slow. So they're likely just going to kill it. But I will bottom that for now. But yeah, opponent did play a Bring Sanity and it mills me x cards or x is number of cards put into my graveyard i am also running this card in this deck 
So maybe they are also going for a mill out and not a Kasha ultimate. Alright, here's Tasha. Thing is that doesn't kill I think I'm gonna let it resolve. Cause we have the win next turn, right? This doesn't kill my creature, does it? Fight will be relaxing compared to nope. okay. come any. So we get to Closer. play this. A3 life. And then Kick this to mill them out once again. Minus 88 cards in the library. <laughs> there you go. Boom! Maybe this deck is overpowered. I'm a liar. This is apparently the best deck in the format. All right, let's get another game. God, it's so look at look how big their graveyard is, dude. So stupid. Oh my god. All right, next next match. All right, opponent going first. Hand is way too slow. That's definitely a mulligan. And we're against Tasha once more. That's an okay hand. But a lot of counters. And we got the Mind Breaker. So if we can get this in the yard, might have a chance to unearth it and mill them out with the Brovac. So when Mindbreaker attacks, the opponent defending player mills half their library, round it up. Search my library for instant sorcery, put it into my hand, then shuffle. I don't think we do that yet. We just probably just counter their Tasha if they play it this turn. I'm going to use my most expensive counter spell here. And then... Yeah, let's look for one of our win cons, maybe. Could also take a time warp. Time Warp is kind of juicy. But I also just want... Cut your losses. Or the... Maddening Cacophony. Hmm. Let's get the Cacophony. Alright, no play is good. Let's play out the Burrell. Now whenever we counter something, we can draw a card and discard a card. And it makes our instance of sorcery cost one less. But I will let them counter. <laughs> uh, hopefully they don't draw a land for their Taja. But I realize one song does not hit um, Planeswalkers. But I guess we have a negate up now. Never mind. We're good either way. Into his hand. We gotta copy it into their hand and then I, they can cast it out. I guess that's worth swan songing here. It's because I don't want them to discount all their spells in their hand, and I don't really have a way to deal with a creature. No land draw is pretty bad. If I play on my Brovac and then I can and I kick my Madding Cacophony, I do win. <laughs> As long as I draw a land, so let's do that. One mana removal is really bad. 
Dang it. Now if they have a second removal spell, I'm kind of screwed. Cut down too efficient, man. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna kill Bro back here. And now it costs two more. That's at five mana instead of three. I'm trying to recast and hope they can't kill, they can't uh, counter it or kill it. Don't do it. All right, all right, all right. It's fine. We can just hit another line and recast it again next turn, right? Mm -hmm. That is not a land. So whenever an opponent casts a spell, they have to pay one, otherwise I draw a card. Do get to draw a card off this, because they don't have one mana to pay. Okay, there's our land. You ready, Pom Pom Chan? Time to put our skills. Let's see you deal with this. I'm incredibly clever. They're gonna draw a card. I think. Oh, they're plusing, okay. You can't fight what you can't see. Seven. Yeah, let's try this again. Could also just bounce both their permanents to their hand. And get back. Like put a negate on top of my library. Six, seven, eight. Or the swan song. Or I can just cast out Brovac and hope they don't have a removal spell. How many removal spells can they have? Let's go! <laughs> don't kill the Brovac. Don't kill the Brovac. He's the grand delinquent. Who's gonna be grander than him if you kill him? No more removal. Damn it. Stop. Look. No! <laughs> Alright, we're screwed. Bro, that costs nine mana now. Phyrexia's secrets won't stay hidden for long. Let's press our advantage. Okay, wash away. So yeah, let's put our negate on top of our library. And let's just bounce their stuff back to their hand this turn. Not over yet, but... It's gonna be pretty hard. So let's draw a card here first. Hit the negate. <laughs> so that was a little misplay on their opponent's part. They forgot about the Rhystic Study. I could have uh, washed it away anyways, but yeah, that's pretty funny. Six, seven, eight mana, dang it. Yeah, let's play the Mind Breaker out. Because even if they kill it, we can unearth it to deck them, deck half their deck. Yep, we can just draw another card here, so that's great. Six, seven, eight. Not hitting a land though. We need to hit so one more land to win next turn. I'm not impressed. Oh, okay, we can't attack or block. That's I can fair. run circles around you. 
Ooh, Kraken, eh? Six, seven, eight. Yeah, Kraken plus Wash Away might be okay here. Or we have the filter out at instant speed. Okay. We can do a lot of things at instant speed next turn. Either flash out the Kraken or return all non-creature non-land permanents to their owner's hand. Which is both their planeswalkers. So let's resolve this. Draw a card. And now I can play the Kraken. And then counter their Tasha. Which lets me return a perm non land permanent with the Hallbreaker Hor Horror to its owner's hand. So now we're left with the Kraken and the Mindbreaker. Ooh, back to negation. Okay, draw another card. Alright, so they do get to resolve their Tasha here. And they can return a creature from the graveyard to the battlefield, but they don't have anything. Keep your distance. And we drew a lat. Excuse me, I didn't read. Add one mana, whatever. I'm just gonna pick Beast. Play out the Grandmaster here. Return their Tasha, because we can. And then. The Mindbreaker should deck them out once again. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> bro, buck! Bro, buck! Bro, buck! <laughs> Dude, this deck is actually pretty fun. I, If you want to have fun, I do recommend making this deck. But if you're trying to win... I mean, we're getting a little lucky, I think. I think we're getting a little lucky here. The opponent did mess up by uh, letting us draw our negate that game. But yeah, let's have another game this is great all right we're versing vadric astral archmage three mana one two it's either day or night it be if it's neither day or night it becomes day as vadric enters the battlefield instant sorcery to cast cost x less where x is a vadric's power and whenever day becomes night put a counter on vadric not a huge fan of this hand But we do have a Signet early, which is nice. So I'm going to try keeping it here. And hope they don't have too explosive of a start. As they are on a red-blue spells deck. I'm hoping they tap out on turn 2, though, so I can play out the Signet. Because, um... Yeah, it's like the only reason I kept this hand was because I had a signet in my opening hand. And I could copy it with the mirror maid. But they didn't tap out, so I'm expecting this to get countered. Nice. It did not get countered. Probably gonna draw some cards then. Yes, they are. Healing their graveyard with instants and sorceries and digging them deeper in their deck. Did draw the cacophony, but yeah, let's play out the mirror maid and copy the signet. And pass the turn. Again, we're just hoping to draw some land. We did draw land, but I think I'm going to play the Defiler of Dreams as kind of a bait for some counter. I need to resolve this Brovac. This might be an okay turn. But they likely have a counter anyways. Okay, it resolved. That's good. 
But now we have to resolve the Cacophony as well. Dang, I do not like playing against blue decks with this deck. But we do have the Hallbreaker, so I'm not going to go for the Cacophony victory just yet. Five, six, seven, eight. Because we can play the Hallbreaker plus slip out the black. The black. Slip out the back. And return their Vadric to their hand. Nice. So that worked out pretty well. <laughs> As the opponent made a angry angry hedron hedron i think it's called but now we gotta hope that he doesn't have a counter for the cacophony next turn or removal for the brovac one two three four mana this can add another Re yeah, let's go for an attack with both our creatures and see what they do. Alright, I'm gonna go for it and hope they don't have a counter spell. And bounce their mage back to their hand. Do we win? Yes! <laughs> All right, yo, maybe this deck is amazing. I I don't know what's going on, but maybe we're getting really lucky, but this is awesome. This is so great. All right, see ya next game. All right, we're undefeated right now. And uh, let's try to keep it that way. Decent looking hand. But it's not amazing. And look, they're probably going to be a pretty aggro red white decks so maybe i do mulligan this uh they're playing at the uh, anim bakal thousandth moon whenever you attack with one or more non-gnome creatures put a plus one plus one creature on anim bakal then create x one one colorless gnome artifact creatures where x is the number of counters on anim bakal so yeah they're gonna curve out on us go wide and then for that so i definitely want to mulligan there try to find something i can do earlier this isn't it either, so let's go for one more mulligan. Not great, but we have the Mox Ember for a little bit of ramp, but we need Brovac on the field for that. Interesting. I think we keep this here. I guess I could have pitched the Tomb instead, so... Yeah, maybe I should have... Pitch the tomb over the mill card. Land tax. Dang it. You know what? So if I control more lands than them, they could just search their library for lands, right? Yep. So I want to make sure that I don't ever have a uh, lands. Is it search your library for three lands? Damn. So this only adds mana if I control a legendary creature or planeswalker. But yeah, they can just curve out here. Nothing I can do about it. And start pumping out a bunch of 1-1s. One I need to get to 6 mana so I can rebuke. Which is going to be a little difficult. Yes. So one, two, three, four. So even if I play the Grand Delinquent plus Mox Ember, I still cannot rebuke the turn after. Hmm. So I guess I just fraying send it to them, which mills them X card. Where X is the number of cards put into their yard. Anywhere. 
Okay, so that's another way to just win, right? We get to, if we had this plus a mill half their library, it would mill the other half with Frank Sanity. We actually have multiple ways to just deck them out instantly. <laughs> ow, 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 ow. Mystic Sanctuary doesn't do it. But let's play out the tap lad. Let's play out Brovac. Which is likely gonna die. I do have one mana to pay. Uh yeah, playing out the Mox Amber doesn't let me hold up anything. <laughs> this also makes one ones whenever their creatures attack, whenever one or more creatures attack, create that many one ones. Yep. Yep. So they're they're going they're going brrr. Can save one life here. I guess I can save two life by blocking this. Are we dead? No! <laughs> I thought we'd live and the next turn we would have gotten to rebuke, right? Yeah. And then I think we had a really good shot at winning. There goes our streak. But I mean the deck's still performing really well and I'm having a lot of fun so let's uh, get another game going. Alright, on the play with a good hand. Against a dinosaur dex, the sun favored. When and Pantalaza sun favored or another dinosaur ETBs, you may discover X or X is that creature's toughness is only once each turn. Seems like a fun one, but let us start wrapping immediately with the cold seal heart on turn two. And next turn we can shuffle the Power 9 into our deck with the Oracle of the Alpha. What is this? Whenever a source deals damage to this, that, that player mills that many cards. It's kind of funny. But yeah, let's just get our Oracle on the board. Here come the dinos. No, oh, they can destroy your artifact. Dang. That's pretty good. Alright, let's attack for two. Let us scry a little bit. Don't think I want that. And honestly, yeah, let's play with the Brovac. We might have some trouble killing it, and we have a swan song to protect it. They got the castle, so they can play a six mana creature if they like to. I don't mind them drawing cards, to be honest. I just need to pr protect this Provac and search for a way to uh, mill them out. Uh oh. Three mana six six. Everyone panic. Alright, let's attack, try to find one of those mill half of their library cards, because now we have the Fraying Sandy and the Brovac. Should I bounce something this turn? Is this worth countering? I think so. Take a nine here. It was a close decision, but we don't need the Brovac since we have the Frank Sanity now. Oh, I did want the um, 
the oracle so we can dig for our win con. It's a little unfortunate. Yeah, I'll take 10 this turn. I'll probably chump the turn after. <laughs> Spark double kind of funny. But yeah, let's just play up the Sphinx. Stop them from um, attacking with their 4 core at least. In your upkeep, if an opponent controls two or more creatures, sacrifice this at your library for two creature cards and put them onto the battlefield. Yes, attack with the frail black. No! Come back! Dang it. Do I want to block? Probably. They do mill a ton of cards here. They have 41 cards left in their library. Let's copy our Brovac. And hopefully we top deck something for next turn because this is looking real bad. The dinos are coming for me. Can't get away from them. Can't get away from them. Draft, they're stomping my face. And now over here, they're chewing me down. Like, <laughs> come on. Why? Why do the dinos follow me everywhere I go? <laughs> they get to shuffle their library. <laughs> the graveyard back into their library. It doesn't really matter because, again, we're just trying to find a card that will mill half their library. But it's kind of funny. However, now I don't think they have lethal, so I don't have to cast this like uh, this is the cyclonic rift, and I can just bounce off the creature here. Six, ten, twelve. Could even chump chump. I don't really need to rovax, do I? Unless it's a card that like mills them twenty. Yeah, let's go like this. We're really hoping for a land. Mills on 13. Dang it, we need a land to bounce everything. But let's mill on 13 and see if that's enough to mill them out. It might be. Because they get to mill who needs to do the map? We just play the cards and hope they go to zero. But yeah, I guess it milled them 13 times 3, right? Yes, so they milled, what? Maths 26, 39 cards, and then 39 cards again, because then this mills them that many cards to the end of the turn. <laughs> Alright, on the play with a pretty weak hand so I will mulligan in to another weekend I do have a brainstorm but I don't have a way to shuffle my library I think I got a mulligan again mulligan yeah this seems pretty decent guess I pitched the gilded lotus and we're against jet I guess maybe I could have Pitched a Kraken at a 7 mana. Wait, what did I pitch? <laughs> Spark Devil? Oops. It's all good though. Creatures you control get plus 1 and have Vigilance as long as you have 3 or more creatures. Creatures you control get plus 1 and plus 1 as long as you have 6 more. Okay, let's try this again. Creatures you control get plus 1 plus 0 if you have 3 or more creatures. Creatures you control get plus 1 and have Trample if you have 6 or more creatures. And creatures you control get plus 1 and Double Strike if you have 9 or more creatures. So basically, their creatures get out of control if they have a really wide board straight. They get increasingly more um, abilities and more attack. But once they have nine creatures, all their creatures have plus three attack, double strike, trample, and vigilance. So 
Let's uh, let's try not to let them get there. Don't want the kitten. Uh oh. Uh oh, no land. No land, no GG. Okay, land is good. You know what? Let's get the Oracle. They can't cast their um, commander next turn, so I won't hold up the Thought Claps just yet. And shuffling the Power 9 into our deck gives us our higher chance at drawing the Moxes, which are basically lands. Uh, they do have an indestructible Toski. Whenever this deals damage to us, they get to draw a card. Oh, whenever a creature deals damage to us, they get to draw a card. And this has to attack each turn, if able. Glad I didn't keep open the Thought Claps. Since they cast a creature that couldn't be countered. I think I will counter here. Don't want them to draw any cards. Create more one ones, anyways. Land would be great, so we can cast out the lotus. However, we did not draw the land. Instead, if we drew the kitten, whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we can exile a permanent we control and return it back to the battlefield. So we can start blinking our oracle and keep shuffling the power nine into our deck, hoping we'll draw one of them. Yikes. Four true, four two indestructible trample is an issue. We can only block one of those flyers, so they're gonna draw two cards here as well. Return all non creature non land permanents to their owner's hand. Instant speed, not the worst draw. As you can bounce their blade. Before they attack, I'll make sure, sure to do it before they attack. Hopefully they don't cast out their commander this turn. Dang it. I'm in danger. But yeah, let's lift them. No, no, don't let them attack you. All right. I literally just went over this. I wasn't supposed to let them attack. I just gave them two extra 1-1 one, one flyers for no reason. <laughs> now I can't block anything either. Yep. That was 100% on me. Even though, I mean, it was unlikely we were going to win, but we definitely had a shot. <laughs> Alright, let's get to the next game. Alright, on the play, good hand. Do need to find more mana, but we have a Signet on turn 2, which will let us play the Midnight Clock on turn 3. Opponent is playing Judith, so they're probably playing some kind of aggro red black deck. Judah gives all their creatures plus one plus oh and whenever a non-token creature dies this deals one damage to any target. When the center is about to choose creature type. So yes I can choose human to make sure I can cast Brovac off of that. Sure. Oops. You know what? I probably should have just played an island. Because that only adds generic mana, but we still have double blue with the Signet plus Island now. So it's unlikely to matter. And we're just hoping to hit land. Nice. Now I can play out the clock and hold open counter spell, which is amazing. Oh, 
Orcish Bowl Masters. Sure. Whatever opponent draws a card, except for the first one this turn, this deals one damage to any target and amasses one. Jokes on you, I don't plan on drawing cards. Anytime soon, at least. Key to the archive for more mana. It will mean that they get to resolve their dude at the next turn, though. But ramp is great. And maybe we can find some kind of board wipe. Got a regrowth? I don't want any of these cards. What does the Displacer Kitten do for us? It lets us blink the key to the archive. I'm not happy with this. Do I take the approach of the second sun? Just for fun. Looks like we're not trying to build them out anymore. We're trying to survive till the approach. But yeah, 7 mana, gain 7 life. And if this spell was cast from our hand and we've cast another spell called Approach of the Sun, we win the game. Otherwise, this gets put back into our library 7th from the top. Boom. boom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 mana next turn. Let's do it. Let's approach. <laughs> We're so gonna die. Ooh, Haster is not wanted. Wanted not what blah blah. Got to speak. Not what I wanted to see there. Well, they discarded their entire hand by all removal spells or something. Yeah. Okay, you're probably gonna phase out their board next turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. So I could probably play out this and phase out more creatures. Yeah. Especially that they pitched all their removal from their hand. Oops, should have done this before they attacked. But I wanted to hold open the march for our creature in case they had removal. So let's phase out all the cards dealing most damage. Buy us one more turn. And obviously save our Bovac. Bovac. How far is the approach? Too far. I think we're screwed. We got three counter spells in hand, but they resolved everything that they need to. Probably did through like throw the game when I decided to try to go for the approach with. But yeah, let's resolve this. We're not dead quite yet, and I'm gonna try to kill their bowmasters and try to trigger the clock here and if we draw the approach of the second sun off the 
off the um, midnight clock, we can win. Doesn't matter. All right. Clock victory. Clock victory. I guess I. Sh yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. Draw the approach. Draw the approach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. Second time we cast it. Boom! Didn't even need to mill them out this time. Honestly, that's a great game to end it off, so... Thank you guys for watching. That deck was a lot of fun. I'll make sure to leave the deck list in the description. Um, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't. I know I've already said that. But I've noticed I'm getting more views than I have subscribers sometimes. And if you guys are enjoying it, um, yeah, just hit the subscribe. All right. And um, enjoy, enjoy the rest of your day.